Hello, my name is Father Tyler Menser with the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception and welcome to Ask a Marian. We recently received a question from Lourdes and Lourdes asks, what is the name of the Eucharistic martyr saint and what was his date of birth? Well, Lourdes, that's a great question and it's a very timely question as well especially at this time when there's a very renewed interest of the church to focus on this great treasure of our faith that we have in the Holy Eucharist. But first, who was this Eucharistic martyr and when did he live? Well, to tell his story, we begin in the streets of ancient Rome and the year is 257 AD. Under the Roman Emperor Valerian, there was a very fierce persecution that broke out against the Christians and many of them were put on trial, were imprisoned, and were even executed for their faith. At that time, there lived a young 12-year-old boy named Tarsisius. Now, Tarsisius was a Christian and served as an acolyte, or what we would commonly call a, an altar server. He would serve at the masses which were held uh, secretly and underground in the catacombs due to the persecutions in Rome at that time. And the story of Tarsisius goes that one day when, as was the habit of the priest who gathered the Christian community together, he asked those that were there if anyone was prepared to take the Eucharist to the other brothers and sisters who were imprisoned uh, because of their faith. And it was a very dangerous mission, but the Christian community wanted to give the Eucharist to those who were imprisoned and who were set to be executed, that they would have that strength of the Lord within them. And it was at that point that young Tarsisius stood up and said, send me. And Tarsisius even went on to say that, you know, it would be his shield, would be the youth, how young he was, that that would be the way that he could get into the prison and kind of be unknown and be able to share the Eucharist without being detected by the Romans. And so the priest was convinced of this and said to Tarsisius as he was entrusting to him the Eucharist, he said, Tarsisius, remember that a heavenly treasure has been entrusted to your hands and do not forget that holy things must never be thrown to dogs nor pearls to pigs. Will you guard the sacred mysteries faithfully and safely? And Tarsisius' response with determination was, I would die rather than let go of them. And so off Tarsisius went with the Lord Jesus in the Eucharist on his person and he walked the streets of Rome trying to get to the prisoners and he encounters a, a group of boys and others that were there that were, were pagans. And they took notice of Tarsisius and came up to him and approached him and they recognized that he was kind of holding something. And they, they began to become aware that he was a Christian and there was some sacred mysteries that he was holding in, on his person. And they, they asked him, give us what you're holding. And Tarsisius refused and he, and he held it. He said he wouldn't give up the, the Eucharist. And so they started to beat him. They started to kick him. They started to stone him and they beat Tarsisius so severely that he was lying there in the street from this pagan mob and he was dying. And it's said that a, a Roman soldier who himself had secretly become a Christian came by and picked Tarsisius up and took him back to the priest. And it was there that Tarsisius died. But the amazing thing is that even though the pagans and that mob of people were beating Tarsisius trying to get the Eucharist, that they, they couldn't find it. They couldn't find it anywhere. And it just simply vanished. And we read in the Roman Martyrology, which is the official record of all the canonized saints in the Catholic Church, that it places the date of St. Tarsisius' death on August 15th, 257. And it goes on to describe in the Martyrology account that the most blessed sacrament was not found on St. Tarsisius's body, either in his hands or his clothing. And it goes on to explain the consecrated host, which the little martyr had defended with his life, had become flesh of his flesh, thereby forming together with his body, a single immaculate host offered to God. Wow, that's powerful story of St. Tarsisius 
a young 12-year-old boy, a Eucharistic martyr and saint. And I think in Tarsisius' life, you know, we know that our Lord Jesus had truly laid down his life for us. And Jesus, it's as though he said to us by his life and by his death, you are worth dying for. And Tarsisius knew Jesus. He knew of the Lord's presence and he knew that the Lord had died for him. And in a very powerful way, Tarsisius, through the powerful and eloquent testimony of his own life and the manner of his death, said to Jesus also, Jesus, you are worth dying for too. And so we had this little Roman boy, 12 years old, and he powerfully teaches us how to lay down our life for Christ. And what is the reason that he laid down his life was to proclaim, to defend, and to safeguard this sacred teaching of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. He knew not simply what he was holding, but who he was holding, the very person of Christ, the living presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, a truth which he gave up his life for, the Tarsisius do. And so we hear from the, the church and the voice of the church and the, the, its teaching that the church draws her life from the Eucharist. The Second Vatican Council proclaimed that the Eucharistic sacrifice is the source and the summit of the Christian life. How is it the source and the summit? Those are powerful words. Well, it's the source because it's that wellspring from which everything else finds its life and its center because it's centered in the very sacred heart, the divine heart of Christ. And that's why it's that, that source of life for the church. You know, we know it's, it's not simply a token or a mere symbol, but it's actually the living, real, beating heart of God, his body, blood, soul, and divinity present in that Eucharistic host. It's also the summit of our faith and Christian life because as we journey in our Christian life, we know that at the very top of the mountain of God is the Eucharist. That's the Lord. We're headed to the heavenly kingdom, but along the way, the Lord gives us his very heart, his very divine life in the real presence of the Eucharist. And so we draw our strength from the Eucharist as its source of our life, and we are all headed to that great summit at which the Eucharist directs us to and is the point at which we're aiming towards. So what a great gift we have in the Eucharist. This is an incredibly timely gift and witness through Tarsisius because in the church now, we have the, the bishops meeting to want to get this Eucharistic revival going so that the faithful and the world can truly see that the Lord is dwelling with us, dwelling with his people in the Eucharist. Many bishops also in their own diocese are trying to get a year of the Eucharist going so that we can learn about this precious treasure and once more be enkindled with what St. John Paul II called this Eucharistic amazement. How can it be that the Lord, the living God, is here in our midst in the humble and simple appearance of bread? But he is the true and living Lord in the Eucharist. And so we ask for the intercession of St. Tarsisius to intercede for us that we may come to be on fire with this Eucharistic amazement of the Lord. St. Tarsisius, pray for us. Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, pray for us. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.